nutrition course and I just fell down this rabbit hole of functional medicine. I did not have a clue that it was going to happen, but all of a sudden it was like, whoa, okay, <laughs> this is much bigger than, oh, you know, finding out a few details to give to parents. This was like eye-opening, kind of jaw-dropping, kind of an awakening, basically. Welcome to the podcast and um, it's great. I'm glad we could meet and connect, to be fair, because I wanted to connect a lot more people in the area. Yeah. And then I kind of put that out there and then you popped up. There you go. It was meant to be. Yeah. It was meant to be. And yeah, so why don't you tell us about kind of your life growing up and what led you into this work that you're in now? Yeah, of course. So I'm originally from Gateshead, so the other side of the water. And um, yeah, grew up there with my sister and my mum and my dad. So I basically lived there my whole life. Um, and as a kid, uh, I was quite an anxious kid. Like I had a bit of, you know, a few gut issues going on, a bit of anxiety, like quite hidden anxiety, but it was still there. Um, and then, you know, as you grow up, you kind of like, you find your way a little bit. And I, I fell into the to the realms of dentistry so I kind of went off to university to become a dental hygiene therapist and I worked in the field for a while and I actually really enjoy treating kids so as a dental therapist um, we do kiddies extractions <laughs> which is heartbreaking and we do kiddies fillings and you know every time I took a tooth out I, it, it just broke my heart and I was like oh you know what Am I, am I, you know, am I educating the parents in the right way? I, you know, we do a little bit at university about nutrition, but it's, it, you know, it's just a small part. And I th just thought, you know, I want to go back to university because I, I want to know the answers. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I joined on a course and it was more kind of a, a like a functional medicine um, nutrition course. And I just fell down this rabbit hole of functional medicine I did not have a clue that it was going to happen but all of a sudden it was like whoa okay <laughs> this is much bigger than oh you know finding out a few details to give to parents this was like eye-opening kind of jaw-dropping kind of an awakening basically so you know as a profession, you know, I'm looking in the mouth, I'm seeing decay, I'm seeing inflammation, like there's no other profession probably in the world where you're seeing it, you're visually seeing that, you know, the bleeding or the, the decay in the teeth, so. Um, yeah, other than emergencies, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so you're seeing this chronic inflammation and of course in dentistry we're given the support with brushing and cleaning and, you know, we do give diet and lifestyle advice, but for me it was like there was just something I, I just wasn't getting it and I like to understand it if I'm gonna you know pass it on mm -hmm. so you know I, I remember being at university and even when I was doing my top-up degree I, and I'd be like yeah but why does that happen why does that happen and they'd be like well you don't need to know why you just you just need to know it and I was like yeah but why so I then went to study nutrition I was like ah oh, okay the, I got all I got all my whys answered because it was like the food that we eat and the way that we eat the food and mm -hmm. um, getting those nutrients to to fuel the immune system was then gonna you know protect the teeth and um, give the right nutrition nutrients for the the constitution of the saliva. Do you know what I mean? So it was like oh wow, all of the pieces of the puzzle all, all started to come together. However, <laughs> so halfway down my nutrition journey, I started following a lot of practitioners in the field, more functional dentists, and one in particular in Australia, Dr. Stephen Lynn. So I reached out to him at the beginning of my nutrition journey, and it was, it was really lovely. It was really, actually, that email reply back from him was quite influential for me to have the courage to do it. 
So he was writing a book at the time, and when he came to London to launch the book, he was like, oh, why don't you come to London? So me and a couple of fr um, friends who were in this field went to see him, and he said, you know, whatever nutrient we are deficient, deficient in, you know, oxygen is the king nutrient. So then he started kind of opening my eyes to airway health and how in dentistry we have such an incredible kind of ability to be looking at this airway space we can you know we can see if there's enlarged tonsils going on we can hear in people's voices voices if that you know there might be like adenoid involvement because you can hear the difference in the tone in the voice you can visibly see if people are breathing through their mouth and we know now there's all of this scientific data is you know backing up what um um, what you know yoga practice and breath work has all been saying now it's backing it up and you know as a profession we can look in the mouth and we can say oh you know you don't have that much space uh, you know can you breathe through your nose and these people who are coming through my door sometimes I'm seeing them every three months these are healthy people coming to see me every three months again what other profession in medicine do you actually get to, to do that um, so, you know, now I've got the knowledge, I can just impart, just even just given that information of, you know, it's, we, we should be breathing through our nose as common practice because the nose is designed to breathe through, it filters the air, it warms the air, it purifies the air. Otherwise, you know, the chest and the tonsils are doing the job of that nose. And if we're mouth breathing during the day and passing over during the night, that is going to cause, you know, potentially a bit of snoring, which can lead to sleep apnea, which is then, you know, if you're not breathing through the night, that is a serious issue, or if you're pausing through the night. So I think now, I think all of a sudden, especially since COVID hit, <laughs> I just had this like, oh my goodness, everything that I've been learning over the past five years is like, now is your time to go and teach everybody what you know because this is the stuff that is going to make the difference moving yeah, forward absolutely so what was the role as a hygienist because you're working alongside a dentist mm. so what was it? yeah you still do what was the, so what was the role difference in that respect and perhaps before you went back to university what were you seeing also with young kids and and how young were were, were humans getting their teeth pulled out yeah i mean the, i think the youngest child i've taken the teeth out tooth out of is and it was a baby molar tooth so a bit a back one so so you have a set of baby teeth and adult teeth and, and the baby teeth um the reason that they just naturally fall out is because the roots of the tooth the teeth naturally resorb as the as the adult tooth comes comes up so all you're left is with the crown and it just naturally falls out so the roots are quite splayed like this so if you've got decay in a baby tooth here but the, the adult tooth is only here you know that's a hard tooth to take out of a four-year-old where it hasn't started to resorb so I remember I remember it vividly because when I came out of university I'd had very very little experience in extracting teeth um, we'd done it under general anesthetic but not not many with the child awake which you know that it that's the hardest part, getting them numb and getting that, that confidence. So um, I went to Uganda to do a dental mission and it was like, okay, <laughs> I learned how to take teeth out. <laughs> wow. uh, yeah, it was just like extraction after extraction after extraction after extraction. So, so what was happening over there? Yeah, t to be honest, I mean, you, I think we... As Westerners, we think, oh, you know, these people, they've got nothing. There's loads of poverty. They, they don't have dental, dental care. But actually, these people have got everything. They've got community. They've got, they're living off the land. You know, they're, they're, they're happy because they haven't got everything. So they, they're not jealous of other people having everything because they, they, they know no different. So the, the, these people would come in for their treatment and they're, bone density was so amazing they'd have all of their teeth and um you know they might have one tooth that was decayed because mm -hmm. they chew on sugar cane quite sure. a lot so it's quite fibrous and it wears the teeth down 
and they might have like one decayed tooth. Coca-Cola is making its way into Africa. Absolutely. And but it's, it's astonishing. It's it, and there's little education around it. I noticed it when I was in Cambodia. Yeah. The, the, the kids' lunchtime was, and I'm talking kids up to teenagers, is all they would do is eat sweets. Yeah. And, they, and it's very encouraged. Yeah. And it's just like a part of the culture. And you can see that it's going to happen in Africa, but at the moment it's, it's not because they just don't have those kind of... It, it's definitely Coca-Cola. It's definitely the fizzy drink industry first. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, you would take you take the tooth out, do the do the aftercare. So we'd go around the villages, and then we'd go on um, islands and on Lake Victoria and set up our camps. And it was so humbling as well because some some people, like a whole class of kids, would like walk for a day because they knew we were going to be in that different region and um so uganda's on the equator so you know when the it's like night and day like it literally happens over like in a in a split second so and you have to be out of there in the (laughs) dark yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah in a split second so it's like right you need to be out of there so this whole group of kids who'd walked to a different village to see us they just stayed in this village overnight they put them up and things and we went back the next day and it was so humbling because they were so grateful like no no crying no whinging no nothing like i remember this one time because i went as a dental nurse as well um you know this this little kid must have been about five he just had like a little tear that ran down his face but other than that you know nothing else um so yeah i i learned how to take teeth out in africa but it's it's funny actually because now i do what i do with um with the world of um, airway health. Sure. So I trained in something called myofunctional therapy, which is neuromuscular retraining of the, the muscles of the tongue and the face and the airway. And it's really to, to really promote the growth of the cranium. So you've got that airway support moving forward. So in Africa, everyone's arches are wide. You've got all of the teeth in place, but look at the epidemic we've got of crowded over like crooked teeth that we've got now. And they say is, you know, you know, mouth breathing. It doesn't allow the tongue to, to sit up in the roof of the mouth. We've got, um, you know, a lots of undiagnosed tongue tie, which is changing the, the function of that swallow. Stress, anxiety, it changes the breath. So we've got all of these stresses on the body. Um, whereas, in Africa, you know, everything is just developing as it should, and they don't have a lot of those external stresses, which which would affect it. Yeah, it's a big um, symptom <laughs> thing, isn't it? Yeah. The, the the mouth and the breath, and the more I've become aware of it, because it has been been put out there by uh, incredible amount of backing from science, which will allow people to write books. It's it's you know it's it's the funding that there's been for it. Uh, and looking into mouth breathing and dysfunctional, dysfunctional, you know, respiratory mm. illness, I guess. It's, um, it's fascinating because it is one big thing we can look at and think, okay, this is clearly dysfunctional. And it's a big symptom of something much mm. larger. And it's not generally the, it's a, it's, it's a symptom yeah. again. And what would you say to, to, to look at the kind of causes of things? Because it, because it, for me, it's like the breath is, the breath is the symptom, but there's something deeper going mm. on, which you just alluded to. It's stress. It's perhaps poor diet. Mm. It's perhaps that we haven't got a connection to, to healthy lifestyles, wh- whether that's food or whether that's being active, whether whether that's moving around. So all these things are probably more what we should be looking at, and then going to get these doesn't get our teeth pulled out, which is such a norm these days. And yeah. you, we talked about it the last last time we. Well, the first time we met, we spoke about taking out teeth, and I'm like, oh wow, yeah, it does take that little nugget of information to then you to wake up to the fact that we are just treating a symptom mm. by taking a, a, a tooth out. Mm. It's just like quick fixing. Yeah. And is it getting to the root of the problem? Not really. No, no, absolutely. And I think, I th- the <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I think what's happened, and especially like definitely over the last 20 years. I think things have evolved so quickly. There's been a lot of change. Been yeah. a lot of change. Every, like mobile phones, you know that forward head posture. Yep. People are opening their mouths. Yep. The, the, the po- your posture, as you know, as a movement coach, your posture is incredibly important 
for the breath because you know if the head's over then the lungs are squashed but then if you've got structural issues that the, if the fascia is tight it's also gonna cause that forward head posture because that's the way it's developed so we need to kind of like look at things how how is something supposed to function why is it not functioning that way and can we actually you know reverse that and then teach it in the correct way so with regards to the myofunctional therapy we're teaching the tongue to you know we want it to sit up in into the palate we want it you know we want our lips to be closed and nasal breathing and a forward swallow at rest without actually thinking about it so this is not just a quick fix i'll come in and we'll do a little bit of this that and the other and if this is neuromuscular reprogramming this is why it takes a year 18 months of dedicated you know small exercises which will then pass over into you know your lifestyle so as a nutritional therapist so as a nutritional therapist you know we always kind of are concentrating on the the mouth and you know telling people to slow down when they're eating but imagine if you're trying to eat and breathe through the mouth at the same time because you can't breathe through your nose you can't teach someone to slow down because they need to breathe so they either you know eat really quickly <laughs> and get it down or they'll have an aversion of foods that are chewier that will take longer to eat and chewing is incredibly important because in in dentistry they use they use a law it's called wolf's law which dictates that bone will grow in the directional force that you put on it so you have to chew for that stimulation of the bone so for me now it's like oh can you breathe through your nose no yes okay that's the issue let's get you breathing through your nose first and foremost there's no point in doing my functional therapy if you they literally cannot breathe through your nose so um you know send into ent if if needs be seeing if there's any polyps or um deviation in the septum um or if there's you know underlying allergies Butaco breathing is quite effective. You know, the small breath holding exercises can really start to, to unblock the sinuses and clear the sinuses and you can retrain your, your, your breath quite nicely in conjunction with all of the other things like diet yeah. and stress levels. Well, the, talk to me about the Butaco method because that was something that was brought in for, for, for specifically for asthma, wasn't That's it? That's right, or, yeah. Or like a, maybe a, a few different ailments i guess mm, like asthma hyperventilation anxiety um yes um so basically the a russian doctor um hopefully i'll get this right a russian doctor i think he just noticed that all of his all of like his patients who were really poorly were all over breathing and mouth breathing so he did lots of research in that area and came up with um this method really predominantly getting you back to to nasal breathing um and just there's a concentration on that nasal breathing because we produce a gas in our nose called nitric oxide, uh, which we store in our blood vessels as well. So when the body is um, is producing energy, so you've got your oxygen and your fuel, you know, and the body thing, when you're doing exercise, it thinks, oh, I need more oxygen. So what the body does, it releases nitric oxide. It's a vasodilator, so it opens the blood vessels so we can get more oxygenation around the body. Now, a lot of that gas is actually produced in the nose. Mm -hmm. And when they found the people who discovered that gas, I think it was like 1996, they got a Nobel Prize because it was that significant. And from that, they, the scientists took the premise of that gas and made GTN spray. So if you've got angina and you spray it under your tongue, it opens yeah. your... And also, isn't it one of the... It's in all kind of like um, statins and, and anything that opens your body up. Mm right to, for blood flow for to blood allow flow. blood flow um and in viagra also mm -hmm. that's i right. think it's in, that's in right. it, it caught it they've i don't know synthesized something that allows more nitric oxide to be produced yeah to then open up your blood cells yeah. which and is fascinating it's fascinating and because it's antiviral it's anti-parasitic it's anti you know it's anything it's 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 a brilliant gas but it's also a relaxant mm -hmm. as well so my functional therapy we want you to nasal breathe but as as the tongue is up in the palate, just behind the upper front teeth, that little bit of gum there, that's connected to your vagus nerve. So as your tongue is in situ, as your nasal breathing, it kicks in the parasympathetic nervous system. So actually we're just, 
where th we are designed to be in a certain way for a certain reason. So sometimes if I'm working with kids who are sucking their thumb, for example, they are trying to self-soothe. They, they, they're calming that nervous system by stimulating that, that, that incisive of papilla. So we want to get the tongue up there instead. So we can get the, you know, the thumb out because it causes a dysfunctional swallow. And we want that tongue to do, be doing the job of, mm -hmm. of that thumb. Yeah, that's a fascinating insight because I think that has some, it could have something to do with, I know children have problems with weaning off the breast mm. when they're um, when they're you know taking milk from the mother and it's like they get to the age two or three and it becomes more of a self-soothing mm. issue and they have to really consciously and when communication comes in like language they start talking and then kids uh, do what they do um, and it comes harder and harder to wean children off yeah and that's fascinating because yeah the my brother was definitely a, uh, a thumb sucker mm. as a kid and it was self-soothing but if he was breathing correctly perhaps that wouldn't have happened yeah because if his tongue's you know it's, it it's, be. it's difficult because the tongue the tongue develops week 14 in utero so you're you're developing that you know and some you can actually see some kids have got their thumb in their mouth in the womb that's yeah, crazy wow. um but if that tongue can't get up there, if the fascia's tight, you know, it's kind of like, oh, what else can I do? What else can I do? So it's kind of like your body will do anything to for that survival survival mechanism. Um, so yeah, if 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 those tight fascia lines are restricted, then the body can't do what it wants to do. So it will then adapt. So, for example some people whose tongue doesn't function properly they will miss out the crawling stage because they can't lift their head up effectively so the baby's like all right i know that i can't breathe when i do that so i'm just gonna sat, i'm gonna stay sat up and i'm gonna adapt but that we know that that crawling stage is really you know influential which is why you know the body work side of things the chiropractors the osteopaths it's such an integral part of what i do you can't just do my functional therapy on its own. It's like, all right, we need a team to do this. And we are very privileged here in the Northeast because there are some amazing practitioners uh, trained in, 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 especially around that pediatric side of things. So I'm very, very lucky. I've got like, um, I know uh, like a midwife who does pediatric, like private pediatric tongue ties. So very, mm -hmm. very, um, I've got a dentist who, you know, does expansion orthodontics it's you know but it's not mainstream so you know when i'm at work i'm uh, you know obviously sharing little nuggets of information about how important it is to Absolutely. breathe through the nose yeah but then have that understanding that not everybody wants to do any like something about it but there are until something goes wrong yeah <laughs> but there are you know you can do so much you can do so many little things mm -hmm. even What's something that parents can kind of perhaps be aware of or start looking into in terms of their kids growing up you know really young and noticing perhaps some things that you know what, what are some things to kind of look out for well things I, th I think you should like we need to be aware of that screen time we need to be aware because that when that head is is low you will develop like that if it's if if you're gonna do that like pretty much all of the day that is really really important yeah, you remember absolutely. when like um people used to walk like with books on their head but actually that makes total sense because you know you're getting that, <laughs> you get that posture right um i think just also notice <laughs> yeah just also being aware like just checking like having a little look every now and again are they breathing through the mouth um it's a big one isn't it it is a big one, and it, and obviously, w when we're sleeping next to someone who, who is, mouth breathing at night, it's quite evident if they're snoring. Mm. Sleep apnea is obviously, obviously massive and normalised in our culture, mm. and yeah, it's 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 such a big. I mean, breathing, <laughs> since, since I've started to kind of educate myself about it, I can't help but note it the first thing whenever i meet someone <laughs> and no judgment but the first thing when i meet, meet someone or you know i'm walking past people it's, it's such a thing i tune into now and it 
and it's just fascinating just as a, a life experiment just to really be your own scientist and look at mm. people how they hold their posture mm. how, how, you know are they carrying extra weight like what what are some things that are different between humans and their breath and it's fascinating it is and you'll pick up signs yeah. and understand more about health and what is perhaps beneficial to not by doing that and being your own research and going out there and, and just paying attention yeah. it's being your awareness isn't it's it? beautiful and it's beautiful because the science the science is so simple mm -hmm. and so beautiful i think sometimes we try and find like everything that's wrong but actually you know the, the simple things like the breath yeah. sunlight hydration like they are the three biggies like are we are we doing that properly no we, we're completely not doing that properly mm -hmm. so sometimes it's kind of um you know with the with the parents it's just like you know ho having a little look are they mouth breathing and then implement some even some tiny little exercise like, like the bee exercise the hum and bee because when you hum on the out breath it vibrates your nasal passages you produce more nitric oxide yeah so no I've wonder it no wonder it makes you feel better it makes mm -hmm. you feel calm um, but the, for for me, I like to know I like to know the ins and outs of why, and now I'm like, oh wow, okay, now I know why. The science is there to back it up, and it's it's incredible. And it's needed, yeah, yeah. as well. And you know, especially because we're all wearing masks, we're all wearing masks. Everyone's like the mouth being pushed open, or they they they're clipping that little metal bit over the nose, so it's occluding the nose. Um, lots of people have lost their sense of smell because of COVID. Yeah. So, you know, essential oils are really quite effective. So I just encourage my patients who've lost their sense of smell, just put a drop of essential oil in your mask and just really, you know, encourage your nose to yeah. start working again because yeah. it's that important. So something as simple as that can be really effective. Yeah, absolutely. And doing things, developing practices before you eat or, or as you walk around, the neighborhood starts just smelling things mm. and just tuning into different smells. I think that can do wonders for firstly getting your nose moving and getting it getting it kind of feeling and understanding the world. And I just think you benefit so much more from that. As you said, you you can relax into different states when you do breathe in certain ways. And there's so many different practices like food, food, like smelling your food before you eat, mm. like just really priming your system to get ready for digestion. Yeah. Like look into the science if you want or just tune just into how tuning, it feels yeah. and then be mindfully in that experience. Do you know what I've started doing is looking over my shoulder. I kind of combine it with a stretch so people don't think, what is he doing? <laughs> but looking over my shoulder, one, then two, and then enjoying oh, nice. the I like first that. mouthful yeah, yeah. because it just settles me. And I just feel if there's anything from our prehistoric existence, mm. we're, we're looking to feel safe. I'm mm -hmm. looking around the room just to see if there's anything there. Can I just be more relaxed mm. in this moment? And it's it's funny because nobody's perfect. And, you know, and it's actually quite ironic that as soon as I started studying functional medicine, because once, once you study one thing, you want to study everything. And then, you know, with that studying and, you know, having this knowledge came a lot of stress, came a lot of anxiety. Yeah. yeah. And, er, and things changed in me, my patterns changed, my, you know, I was trying to answer more emails and, you know, missing my lunch. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> what am I doing here? I'm being thrust into yeah. this stressful state. Even though I'm trying to help more people, it, it was actually taking its toll on me. So I felt like I went through this really stressful time. I feel, I feel like I had to go through it so I could, you know, relate to my patients. But when you're when your brain is trying to do a million things at once, like you, your food, you, your food, you just you shovel it in, or, or you're trying to read at the same time, or you you eating on the cord. Absolutely, the thing you're trying to do is help people, and you can't if you're not helping yourself. Yeah. And then it's cut this kind of instant spiral that you can get caught in, and I definitely find that too. I feel like my knowledge or my time is going to help people more, so I want to do it more. But in turn, I'm not really giving the example of what I want to yeah. teach, and and especially in our world of well, I know. well, call it an industry, call it call it just lifestyle. You want to be what you are talking about. But it's hard, and you know, it's you've got to be hard. realistic and be like, well, I'm, you know, I try my best, but I'm not, you know, not yeah. perfect yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. But you know, if if I can 
you know, I, I think I put a lot of pressure on myself thinking, oh my God, I've got to fix all these people now. I know what's going on. And now I'm just like, oh, you know what? I don't have to do everything yesterday. You know, I can start putting things together and supporting different people in different ways. And even if it's just sitting with a patient and just talking to them and just asking them how they are and, mm -hmm. you know, that in itself, you know, you get that release from a patient and they just feel listened to and they feel yeah. understood. And I think quite often a lot of people know what they should be doing with their food and this, that and the other, but they just want to be listened to at the end of the day. Yeah. Absolutely. I think, could we talk about what you mentioned about the Dr. ABC and combining that perhaps with some sort of, because uh, I thought that was such a genuine, real life, simple, and I want to touch on also mm. the simplicity of these things, because it can seem overwhelming, mm. but the simplicity of perhaps... <laughs> The, the, the whole industry of your GPs, your doctors, your, the, your medical world, and developing some kind of real life, like Dr. ABC. Yeah. For chronic. For, for, for chronic illness. For chronic or, illness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So basically, um, we had our uh, medical emergencies training, mm -hmm. online training, n not long ago. And it just, came, it just came to me like, you know, we know exactly what to do in, emergen in an acute emergency so you know we look what where where is the danger we we look for a response in that patient then what do we do we open the airway we check if they're breathing and then we check their circulation but why cannot we why can't we do this for chronic disease why cannot you know go to a gp or whoever it's like okay well what's happened what's changed when was it like wh where is this yeah. stress coming from yeah, where are these headaches coming from what does that patient look like you know are they pale have they got you know dark circles in their eyes are they not you know are they not listening to the conversation effectively and then looking at you know when we put someone's airway when 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 we know that person's not breathing or whatever we we put the airway back like that's what we do mm -hmm. because you know it stops the tongue yeah, from you know that's fundamental to yeah to, to being alive to being alive <laughs> like the airway is the key to to everything but it's structure as well as um you know how how we're how we're breathing and then you know checking their breathing no one does that so we go to school we get our eyes checked we we check our spelling we check this that and the other but no one checks the breath nobody checks that but you know in in um in the east this is this is a pr this is what they do first they they sit and they do you know meditation and breath work that is that is part and parcel of their teachings isn't it mm -hmm. um and yeah and how how is this dr a b affecting your circulation how is that 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 stressor on your life then having an effect on everything downstream mm -hmm. so it'd be quite a good little thing to do um, I think we just got to think about things simply, like you yeah, said. Yeah, I think the simply. Have you heard of um, the Hungarian physicist, the Ignaz Semmelweis, who, it, like 1850s or something, mid 19th century, uh, and he was the one who introduced hand washing. Okay. Oh have yes. You, have you heard about that? So yeah. this is when they they didn't wash their hands from yeah, the, the no, from the, the morgue. 100, 150 years yeah. ago, no one. It wasn't common practice. I don't think anyone did it with any sort of intention. You might do it after food to get grease off your hands or something, but, you know, it was never the intention of spreading germs and yeah. disease through your hands, through touch. It just wasn't a thing. It was perhaps in the air or through a spell or, like, it was just not, yeah. not commonplace that you could catch disease through your hands. So in this certain hospital in, in Hungary, um, there were doctors dealing with cadavers, mm. with corpses, and they were going to the next room to deliver babies. And in that process, the doc, the, well, the, 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 the kind of, it was he the owner of, the, of the, the practice? I'm not sure. But he essentially was witnessing so many deaths of babies. Of, of babies, newborn babies. This was just unheard of. And it was quite, and it was quite different to a lot of other neighboring um, practices. And he was like, okay, something's going on here. Something's not quite right. And he tried a few things. But one thing that he found worked was introduce a wash station mm -hmm. in the room 
that the doctors would then go from dealing with corpses to then deliver babies. Very simple, and he found out that he reduced the mortality rate of infants and then in turn went around trying to teach other doctors and physicians this practice. Um, you know, he hadn't done any uh, peer-reviewed studies, but he was just like, come, <laughs> come on, on, this yeah. works. Please try yeah. this. This is really important. Um, just try it if it works. And he was just shunned because of the simplicity of it. Oh, well, lots of egos involved. If if this was the case, we it, 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 we would know it. Yeah. You know? It, it, it is. We, we would know this already. So he was he was just 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 out outlanded essentially and um he, he lost his job he suffered with mental health issues he ended up in a mental institution and it wasn't until he passed away mm. that his work wasn't recognized and look how insane we are on the uh, on the approach to washing hands right now well i know you would be very proud now wouldn't he yeah. <laughs> he's your god surely but i know it's it is the simple things and i think the last time we chatted as well and i uh, for me i, I like that whole the whole falling pregnant and pregnancy and what like what we should be looking for like the, the basics so um so when we germinate a seed i like looking to nature for things and how, how 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 simple it is but when we germinate a seed for germination you need three things you need warmth oxygen and water so you know warmth vitamin d uh sunshine um community love mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of things that come un could have come under warmth oxygen you know are are women being asked how are you breathing how are you sleeping at night you know are you are you waking up gasping for breath or things like that you know that is significant because you inevitably you are going to put you know there's going to be more stresses on on the lungs but you might put on weight and the tongue has a fatty component that that could be um contributing um and hydration like I I don't have children myself. I've never been pregnant, so I don't know what they what they're checking. But wouldn't it be beautiful to do like the Wow campaign, like the Warmth Oxygen Water campaign, where this is the basic stuff that pregnant or people who are trying to get pregnant are are being measured for? Yeah, interesting. And the people that are trying to get pregnant, I only found out recently, reading on the back of uh, you know an alcohol bottle that should not be taken when pregnant or when trying to get pregnant. I don't think that's common knowledge no. that people really, you know, it, it, it's kind of almost like <laughs> a way in <laughs> for, to feel more relaxed perhaps <laughs> to try and get pregnant. But it's actually, uh, you know, as it would make sense not to f fuel yourself with a, to a point, you know, um, <laughs> poison. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? It, it is. is. I, I think it is. Um, but yeah, back to the simplicity piece. I think that that example is so important because it's almost like science never arrives. It's almost like if we think we know something, then we have to step back because we're not then open to other things. Mm. And I think we're seeing it now. The simplicity, of course, masks work. Well, I haven't seen any that many well i haven't seen any studies that say there's a clear difference mm. of um infectious disease being passed on with or without masks i've not seen it and i think we need to just step back slightly and just think okay well what don't we know and what do we know because there's a there's a, there's a big crossover there yeah and the simplicity of how we think stuff feels or well, of course washing your hands you know it makes sense now because it's in our it's in our it's in our awareness but how much are we doing it are we doing it too much mm. like it's 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 all it's all yeah. it's all involved uh, yeah you could go down lots of rabbit holes that way i think especially with all of the um like the alcohol gels and things like that but hand like hand washing with soap mm -hmm. is the most effective mm -hmm. is the most effective and, it, and you know this is coming back to the dental aspect of things and i'm not a big fan of mouthwash you know the clin you know the the clinical evidence isn't really there but you know if you're putting an antiseptic mouthwash in your mouth you are killing some of the beneficial bacteria yeah you know and going back to the nitric oxide side of things we need certain nitric we need certain bacteria in the back of our mouth 
to make that conversion into nitric oxide. Yeah. So if you are constantly using these antibacterial mouthwashes and destroying your natural microbiome, that then has a, a, a knock-on effect. So for my patients, I'm like, okay, this is not about killing bacteria. This is about getting the balance right, working out why those pathogenic bacteria want to survive in your environment, and then working backwards. So it's like, if you, if you have got sleep apnea, and you you know you're hypoxic you're gonna breed the bacteria that live in a hypoxic environment it just makes sense to me this is how my logical brain works i'm like all right then so why why is that one surviving that one not surviving okay let's look at the whole picture mm -hmm. and try and make that environment just a nice environment for the good bacteria to live once we do that Let's then, you know, take some probiotics and think, right, these are the good bacteria. They will then now survive. If you put a probi probiotic bacteria into a body that, you know, that won't, that it doesn't want to survive in, it's not going to survive, is it? So yeah, you can put loads of probiotics in and then is it going to work? Yeah, if the baseline for your gut is, is, is almost... Um well, if you're putting things into your body for many years that have produced kind of a gut lining, which isn't mm. certainly healthy, then just filling yourself with supplements or yeah. probiotics. And, com and this comes back to stress as well, because that, you know, we can test for cortisol in the saliva. Cortisol is acidic, you know, and if you've got that acidic environment, it is going to have an effect on that gut wall. Um, so... I think, you know, mindset and positivity and, you know, that's hard as well. Like, I struggle with that. Like, I, so, like I have to really, really, you know, tell myself, like, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. Because, you know, if someone, someone says something that is opposite to what you've said, like, that's hard. You know, you've got, <laughs> you've got to grow some balls, haven't you? Yeah. So, you know, it's been a massive learning curve. And some days I'm like, oh, my goodness, what am I doing? I wish I didn't know this stuff. But then I'm like, come on, this, you, you, this is your purpose. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to bring to people. So, I, yeah, no, I have good days and bad days. But Yeah, I think, I think that is, could, could be summarized in just you being very humble in your knowledge and what you know and what perhaps not okay to lean into stuff that might mean that you're not right in this regard mm. and how that makes you feel and just being in the discomfort as oh mm. i might have been teaching that this way okay well you know i'm just gonna face this now with integrity yeah. and not be too harsh on yourself yeah, yeah. But i think i think i think that makes for the the perfect functional hygiene <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's good like i feel so privileged i feel like you know, uh, the gift of curiosity. It's it's always about that curiosity because it leads you down the most amazing paths. It's like, it's yeah. like well, why is that happening? <laughs> I want to know why. And then you're like, whoa, okay. That now I can see all of these things now. This is as if you're like seeing from above. It's like, okay, I get it. I get that. I get that. I get that. I get that. So I'm just in that learning phase still. Um, but just slowly trying to kind of like trying to work out a way of implementing it into into my dental work but then also having my complementary therapy separate mm -hmm. so it doesn't you know cross lines it's like okay if you want to do that stuff let's do it over here if you want to carry on with the dental stuff then I do it in my in my dental practice so that having that space has been it's been amazing, a big weight off my mind, thinking, oh, okay, now I can help these people because I have got the space to actually yeah. do it. Yeah, so that's sure. exciting. So could we talk through some practical, perhaps, takeaways that people could start implementing in their daily, day-to-day -day hygiene of, the, of their mouth or checking for things? One thing I've heard of and I don't do anymore is swill my mouth out after brushing my teeth. I it makes sense to me to brush my teeth you know spit out the residue and then just let let the the, the toothpaste which i use which is just there's some coconut oil in there there's some um charcoal activated charcoal that seems to be a good thing <laughs> just for just for general you know natural substance that can that can clean um and then there's probably a few other bits 
Yeah. But there's not too much more than that in my toothpaste. Uh, well, I think as well, it's like, I think we're obsessed with like these products and going back to Africa. Mm -hmm. They don't have toothpaste in the middle of so Africa. What do they use in Africa? So they've got this special tray, I can't remember the name of it. And sugar they take it. No, it's not sugar cane. And they take a twig off this tree and they bite the end and, it's, and it frays, but n yeah. the bits don't come off. So okay. they use that as their toothbrush oh and wow. then they chuck it. It's the most hygienic because they just get a new toothbrush every, <laughs> every time they brush their teeth. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I went in 2010. You don't, uh, <laughs> don't need more people <laughs> killing, killing the natural trees. <laughs> I know. <laughs> planting trees. Yeah, but the, I've, I've, I went in 2010 and I've still got, I've still got the twig. Wow. And it's still just as it was. I'm going to put a link to that. <laughs> it's incredible. Not heard but, about but yeah, I mean, that's, they are all adjuncts because, because we don't live off, the, look, we don't all live off the land. We do, you know, we do have acidic foods. We do have this. So all of the, the products that are produced are there t for added protection. Sure. So yeah, uh, you know, spitting, not rinsing. It just means it's going to absorb into the, into the, to the teeth. Um, but for me, it's like, you know, I when I when my patients come in, uh, before I even look in the mouth, they I have a flip chart and I say, right, this is this is what's happening in your mouth. This is what we're doing. This is why your gums bleed. This is you know this is what's going to stop them. This is what's going blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And it takes what two minutes, and then the patient gets it. They understand what's going on because very simplistic. And then as I'm going around, I'm like, okay, this is what we're doing. So if you listen out for me, this is what like. I'm going to know where the bleeding is. So you listen out where that, that is. So you know at home exactly where to go. Or yes, if I'm measuring important. underneath the You're gums. You're not taking their power away, which is yeah. a big part of it. Yeah. And then if I'm measuring underneath the gums and the, and, the, and the gums are a bit deeper than what we'd like, I'm like, okay, if you hear it above this number, that's where we need to concentrate. So that you need to be listening to this. And then um, I, I get them and I show them how to brush in their mouth. I give them the mirror. This is what we're doing, getting them cleaning in between the teeth to take that inflammatory load down, basically, because when that bacteria colonize and they're not the bacteria that we specifically want, then, you know, those y your immune system's drawn to that area because it wants to protect you. You, go, you know, gum disease, inflammation is your body's way of going, woo, I'm trying to protect you here. I'm not quite happy. So you've got to remove the bacterial source while fueling the immune system. It's got to be robust enough that it's got the nutrients that it needs. Each tooth in itself is an organ. So it's supplied, it's got a nerve and a blood supply, which not many, when, when you think about it, you're like, all right, that makes sense. It is, it, it's an organ, but we're so obsessed with like, thinking about the teeth from the outside and the way that I look at it like if you if you picture the to a tooth as a tree okay so you you feed that tree it comes from the ground you know you're fueling that so the the, the health of the soil the you know the hydration the this that and the other that's going to produce the beautiful leaves on the beautiful flowers on the outside of course if there's acid rain from the outside it's going to you know damage everything but essentially it's the inside out of the tooth that's that's the most important absolutely yeah yeah and not isolating it yeah and looking at it from just the tooth yeah and looking at the whole surroundings of it and, and what it's a part of yeah <laughs> yeah Ooh. absolutely Big. i think that's <laughs> i think that's golden um and how what how would you go through this consultation? How how long would you spend with the patient? Obviously, it's all relative. It is all relative. Like so, I work in a couple of dental practices, um, and you know, it depends on what the patient needs. Mm -hmm. So if they don't have any I issues, if they've got bleeding below ten percent, um, then you know, then it's a maintenance c clean. And when you go and see your hygienist, that's what it should be. It should be maintenance. But you know, even more so now with COVID, I'm, I'm very, what's the word? <laughs> I, I, I'm very encouraging for the patient to, to come back, you know, for that support. If they need that support within a lesser time frame, it's like, okay, you're bleeding at 80%. I had a gentleman last week and you know, he's in his eighties. And when I seen him, I was like, you know, you, 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 your bleeding scores over 80%. He's on lots of, heart medication, this, that, and the other. And I explained to him the link between gum disease and heart disease. And I noticed that his mouth was very dry and he was on quite a lot of medication. So 
Wow. Like for him, he, he went home, he rang his doctor and just said, look, um, this is what my hygienist says. And she also said that I've got a dry mouth. So the doctor said, yeah, well, she is right with the link between heart disease. You've been on this medication, which for 20 years that might be contributing to your dry mouth let's take you off that and see how how you go he came back within two weeks i think it was he got his bleeding score down to 20 and he said i've all of a sudden got saliva in my mouth again and then we've been doing some more specific treatment and his and his bleeding scores down to two two percent from 80 and now he's got saliva in his mouth just because it's like okay we can do these little things here if if the GP, you know, if the GP is willing to do it and now you have the education, now you know that when you brush your teeth, it's going to bleed to start with until you get rid of that bacterial load. He's my best patient. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. That's amazing. What a story. I think the biggest takeaway would be, for me, that you're educating yeah, that's alongside of it. You're not just shutting up, yeah. opening your mouth, do what you got to do and then I'll leave. It's like... We, we as humans, it's really important for, if we want to get well, is to be eager, be curious, to learn yeah. and take on that information and then apply it. Because if, we, if we're not doing that, it's always going to result in, right, fix me and then I'll go. And, and you're, you, it's so disconnected yeah. because you're, you're, you're almost unconsciously going about your life expecting other people to fix you when you go wrong. Yeah. And it's and it's so much more more than that. It's so much more. And you know, uh, people want to be empowered now. They I do, think more yeah. than more than yeah. ever because of COVID, people are like, oh, okay, I need to do something here. And for me, again, I feel I feel just privileged that I've studied so hard and I've started to put the pieces of the puzzle together because now I'm like. Oh, okay. I can look at someone's medical history even before they come in, and I, I can get I can have a sense of what's going on because I've got that you know I've got that knowledge. And for me, it's like my passion is these certain foods can actually you know support you in that way. So vitamin C, for example, you know vitamin C, it's a biggie in the dental world because we know that you know kind of. Um, a lack in vitamin C can you know can contribute to, to gum disease but for me like with a smoker I, I you know I'm I don't I don't tell smokers to stop smoking I just say you know the ligament that connects your tooth to your bone is made of collagen which is you know you need an abundance of vitamin C to make that collagen as a smoker you'll burn through 30% or above more vitamin C therefore you know if you're not ready to quit just try and get more high vitamin c foods in your diet just to support you as much as you can so it's kind of like giving them the knowledge but applying it into what's going on in the mouth i think it's really important yeah and they might then perhaps realize it's so hard to get this vitamin c <laughs> if i just quit smoking yeah. then i'll have an abundance yeah but it, you know and it's <laughs> and it's just that once they start because some of them don't even eat vegetables. Once they start eating vegetables, like, oh, okay, I, I feel know. good here. <laughs> um, and it's and it's just, it's it's trying to be encouraging because some people don't want to listen, and that's fine. And it was hard at first because I was like, ah, oh my god, I've got all this knowledge now. I need to help everyone, but some people just did not want to hear it. And I'm like, okay, then. So now you know it's it's asking is it all right if or, or you know having those open questions or you know yeah. having a sense of because people i can imagine if people come to you and they do have this impression that i'm just gonna come to you and you're gonna do your thing and i'm gonna walk away just because better. everyone's still like oh you're just going for a scale and polish that's that's you know that's what we've been brought up sure thinking and you know you know nhs dentistry's probably reinforce that because it's just in out in out in out in out in out but now it's like okay i, I don't want to do that anymore i i, I want to take you know i want to support people on that on that journey to help them get better and I, I work with you know a couple of really supportive teams now um i mean i've always worked with supportive teams but it's like they you know they're very encouraging to me and what i do in that complimentary world as well which is really good um so we in one of my practices we're starting to do like saliva diagnostics so we are actually 
we know from research what back what pathogenic bacteria you know how are involved in gum disease so we can actually measure that in people's saliva like at the start of a treatment do the treatment at the end of a treatment um, and then hopefully I'll be kind of implementing diet and lifestyle but actually it's the basics that make the most that make the most difference like are you eating your seven vegetables a day are you drinking enough water and then once they start doing that it's like oh okay so actually you can support someone's nutrition but if it's in a if it's in a a dental kind of treatment you know is that is that actually going to help them because they're doing it for like purposefully for for a reason uh to see that inflammation come down and people love numbers people love the bleeding score because it's like oh what was it last time what is it now because they they then know that that is their job to get rid of that inflammation that's their job that's not my job Mm -hmm. my job is to teach and you know obviously it's to clean but i always say to my patients the most important part of my job is education and that's that's it if you can go away get rid of your inflammation then when you when i come to clean it it doesn't hurt when you're trying to clean inflamed gums that's not nice but if they do their job and then come back, it's like, ah, <laughs> this is this is cool. Yeah, then they can really enjoy come to see yeah. you regularly, have the teeth clean, just like getting their hair done. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like they've, they've got to take responsibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. but they've got to know what's going on. So, you know, like I say, the educational side is the most important part of my job, hands down. I'm looking forward to our consultation. So I've not, I'll confess, live, uh, I've not been to see the dentist in about 15 years. <laughs> and that's, that's not right. like, uh, I'm I'm proud of that. I, just, I don't think I've had the money. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't had any pain. I haven't had any issues with my gums mm. or teeth. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to see yeah. what you think. <laughs> well, in my clinic, I don't do my dental stuff in my in my clinic here. That I do all my okay. hands-on stuff here. So this is kind of like um, oh, I've I've trained in too many things. So basically, <laughs> I I do kind of hands-on work there. So I've got my massage bed. I'm a massage therapist as well, um, and I do a bit of dental acupuncture and you know um, TMJ uh, release mm-hmm. work. But yeah, so does that complement the? the hygiene or is it just the kind of yeah. something else that you're passionate about and into well it does because you know i'm seeing the inflammation so it's like okay well why is it inflamed sure because if people are stressed and clenching their teeth and grinding their teeth it's like oh well why is that going on is there a sleep issue or is there a stress issue which will drive inflammation um if they cannot open their mouth effectively they cannot chew effectively so that's going to affect everything as well so it complements it but it it is separate to dentistry so i just thought okay just so it wasn't blurring the lines it's like i'm gonna do that here and i'm gonna do it here you know who knows maybe one day i'll have a dental hygiene suite (laughs) who knows where it's all blended together uh, but I just need to practice in, in my in my clinic room I'm just like practice 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 so I can get more information see especially with the myofunctional therapy side of things you know see what works see what doesn't work just invite people in to a safe space because if you if people have got poor sleep and poor nutrition and poor breathing they could often be quite anxious so you know a dental practice is not <laughs> if you're anxious a dental practice is not the the most like um serene place so Invited. i just thought yeah so my room is very kind of like relaxed um as well so i just wanted it separate but yeah i'll see you in my clinic and then you'll have to come for your teeth done in my practice as well <laughs> sounds good all right where can people find out more and listen to you more and then, uh, yeah, yeah, follow you. Yeah, so dentally wise, I work in Gateshead on a Wednesday at Durham Family Dental. That's in Low Fell. Um, I do see patients under direct access there as well. So you don't actually have to see the dentist. So if, someone wants, if someone's got their own dentist and wants some private hygiene, then they can come and see me for that. Um, and my other practice is in Darlington. So it's um, Middleton St. George Dental Practice. So I'm there on a Thursday and a Friday. And then on a Monday and a Tuesday, 
I am at Hot Pod Yoga in Whitley Bay and I've got a clinic space there where I do all of my complementary therapies, so massage therapy, my functional therapy. I do work with a company with the my functional therapy because it is a long therapy and you know it's integrated. I work within a team and they organize kind of my books and things like that. So I do work with them. But if anyone wants to reach out, they can find me at the functional hygienist. So that's my um, Instagram and Facebook site and email caroline at the functional hygienist.com. Um, my website's just going under a bit of um, kind of like changing it up at the minute I've just got a new logo and things like that rebranding um, so hopefully there should be more content on there soon but yeah if anyone wants to reach out just um, send me an email or catch me on my Facebook or Instagram page amazing yeah Fair for that <laughs> amazing thank you so much <laughs>